Okay, here is Fire Alarm Buying Guide Part 3. Smoke detectors and heat detectors. Okay, there's a lot you need to know about this, alright? These are just some of the, these are most of the smoke detectors I have. I've got two more downstairs, but they're on the ceiling. I didn't want to take them down, especially because they're based, they're head wired. I'll explain that in a moment. So, and then I've got two heat detectors here. I've got the other heat detectors in the system, but I'm not going to take those down either. <laughs> okay, so smoke detectors, these are all conventional smoke detectors. Just thought I'd say that right now. Anyway, so... The thing with smoke detectors is obviously besides the fact that they detect smoke, they come in two types of sensors, and they come as conventional or addressable. Now, here's the thing. If you have a conventional panel, then pretty much all of these smoke detectors, well, obviously except the household one right here, whee! except the household one, will work fine, okay? But there's a couple of little compatibility things, like the System Center i3. Well, this is actually a hollow i3 because this is, this is the one that I accidentally fried. <clears throat> and I'll explain how that happened. And then here's a four wire i3 with a heat detector and a relay. So here's the thing the System Center i3 has some sort of smoke feature on it, and it's only compatible with certain panels. Okay? The two wire. I3 is only compatible with certain panels. So don't use it on a panel that it's not compatible with. The four wire version of the I3 you can use on pretty much anything, okay? But this one is two wire. Basically what that means is two wire I3s use crap. Okay, start over. Two wire smoke detectors wire like pull stations, okay? Like You'd wire it in like a switch or a pull station. It sucks a tiny bit of power from the circuit, and when it goes off, it sucks a lot of power, and the panel goes into alarm. It's kind of like a switch. So, that's the I3 right there, two wire. And then there's a four wire I3, which works different. It has four wires instead of two. Two of them are a power source, okay? A power source that needs to be reset because. With these smoke detectors, once they're activated, they stay activated until you cut their power. So, four wire detectors have two wires to power it, and then two more wires which you'd connect to the circuit. What's nice about these is they're compatible with pretty much anything, but what's mean about them is you, they require more wires, and they need a relay at the end of the circuit that wires to the zone so that if one of these goes bad, it can give the zone a trouble. But, that's the thing, okay? That's the difference between 2-wire and 4-wire. Now, the thing with 2-wire is they're designed to be used on current limited circuits, which means that only a certain amount of power gets into the circuit, which can be a problem if you're making a homemade panel. That's how the 2-wire i3 blew up, because I didn't know about current limiting, and I also didn't know about the 2-wire i3's compatibility issues. Yeah. I know, sucks. <laughs> anyway, so not all of these detectors have that two wire compatibility issue though. A couple of unique things. The ESL611U right here. This one is old. I've never tested it because I don't have a base for it. But this one is quite old. It's conventional and it's photoelectric. What am I doing? <laughs> anyway. So, the i3s, if you can find a 4-wire version, or if you have a panel that's compatible with a 2-wire version, great detectors. These are awesome detectors. This one came off the ceiling of the hallway. This one is on the ceiling. This one actually works. Now, they are great detectors. Now, i got a couple more detectors here. The Gamewell 60A. Gamewell Z77 with the... 
This is a D7 photoelectric head, and I've also got an R7 ionization head for it. This thing here, it's super rare. I think I'm the only person who has one of these. Pretty cool though. Anyway, and then I've got my Simplex 2098s, which I used for quite a while, but I don't use them anymore. No, they're not for sale. Anyway, so the thing with these three, the thing with these four detectors right here is these are head, these are base determined. The the two wire or the four wire wiring is determined by the base, where these three are determined by the head, these four are determined by the base. Which means that you can take this head, and this is a two wire base, but you can take the same head and put it on a four wire base and it'll work fine. This one is like that as well. And so is this one. Well, this is already a four wire base, but this is another two wire detector with a two wire base, but the thing with these is they don't worry, they don't have a problem with current limiting, okay? So, I've actually discovered that with these three right these four right here, if you wire if you wire the detector with a relay in series so that like one end of the power source goes into the detector, then the other end of the detector goes into a relay, then the other end of the relay goes back to the power source, then these can actually be converted to be like four wire detectors. Which I thought was kind of interesting. They're not supposed to be wired that way though, but if you try to do that with one of these, one of these head wired ones, or I wouldn't say head wired, but if you try to do that with one of these head determined detectors, especially with the two wire i3, you'll probably blow it up. But these, I've tested it, they're safe. If you wanted to do that, you could. Anyway, so, and then the two that I have downstairs are four wire. Yeah. Anyway, so, this detector is right there, thing, dome, like that. Now there's two types of sensors, there's photoelectric and there's ionization. Photoelectric detectors, I'm going to show a diagram, use a light source with a light detector at an angle. What happens is smoke particles flow into the detector and bounce the light source onto the light sensor, causing an alarm. You know what? I can actually try to pull this cover off real quick. Hold on. Then I can show you. Actually, then I can actually show you. There we go. Then second cover. There we go. All right. Detection chamber. All right. That's what they call it. They call it a detection chamber. Geez, that's dark. Hold on. There we go. That works. So what it... Aw, uh, turned off. Stay on. Is it going to stay on? Are you going to stay on? Thank you. Alright, so what we have here is we've got a, a light-emitting diode, an infrared LED that shoots a beam of light across the detector right here. And then right here, there we've got a light sensor, okay? So what happens is smoke particles flow in and reflect that beam of light into the sensor. That's, and there's all these baffles here because the sensor detects light levels and the baffles prevent ambient light from the room you're in from getting into the detector. It has to be really dark inside these things. That's why they're black. So, beam right there. Smoke reflects the beam into the sensor. Now there's also a red LED right here that shoots a beam directly into the sensor. That's a test LED. This LED lights that LED, to, or that sensor, to make sure that the sensor is working the way it should. In case you want to know how they tested, how the test function on these worked. So, yeah. That's how photoelectric works. Come on. Click. Yeah, I'll click it later. Anyway. That's how photoelectric works. Now, photoelectric is designed for larger particles of smoke. Like the kind of things you'd get if you were to stick a soldering iron into a couch. Or if you were to have a lit cigarette on a bed or something. 
Something that doesn't have a big fire, but smolders, because they produce larger particles. That's what photoelectric is good for. Now ionization, like this little ionization head right here, is designed for things. <laughs> is designed for big fires like flames that put out lots of smaller particles instead of larger particles. These work a little bit differently. I got that homemade smoke detector out because it has, it's also ionization, I can show you. That right there is the detection chamber. I can't take it apart because it has a small radioactive source in it that I shouldn't really touch. <laughs> but basically there's a radioactive source in the very bottom, then there's ionizing magnet there's ionizing electrical plates at the top and the bottom. What happens is the the radioactive source produces a little field of ionizing ionizing radiation that doesn't it doesn't go very far, I'll tell you that. It doesn't go very far. Most of it is stopped by the detector cover. It's alpha particles. For those into physics, it's alpha particles. <clears throat> and basically smoke particles go in here. And they get ionized by the radioactive alpha particles. And they create an electrical charge. Then this plate right here, or the plates on the detector, sense changes in electrical charge. And when it senses that, it activates. That's how ionization works. Now, when you're buying a smoke detector, there's some more things you need to know. Addressable smoke detectors, unlike addressable pull stations, cannot be converted to non-addressable. Okay? Just thought I'd warn you that that can't be done. Because addressable smoke detectors actually use, are actually smoke sensors, where the panel does all the detecting. You can't wire an addressable smoke detector to a, to a non-addressable panel because there's no possible way it would work. Because the addressable detector actually sends data to the panel and the panel sends data to the detector back and forth. The detector sends the amount of smoke it's detecting to the panel and the panel determines whether it goes into alarm or not. That's why. So, if you can find if you find a great deal on an addressable panel, unless you have a Unless you have an addressable panel that is compatible with, do not get it, okay? Do not get it. Get a conventional one, okay? That's pretty much it. Now, for heat detectors, it's not too bad either. There's conventional and addressable as well. And the difference between the conventional and the addressable heat detectors is pretty much the same. But heat detectors, these are older mechanical ones, don't have any... The older mechanical heat detectors don't have any electronics in them. You won't ever find a mechanical heat detector that's addressable. Electronic ones, though, you'll find both conventional and addressable. The electronic conventional heat detectors work like smoke detectors, only they sense heat instead of smoke. And the addressable ones work like smoke sensors, like addressable smoke detectors, only they send temperatures to the panel instead of smoke particle counts. So how these old mechanical ones work is this one right here uses a bimetallic disc and as temperature increases the disc bends. When the disc bends to a certain point it trips the alarm. And then this one right here works the same only it's inside this little bell shaped thing. Electronic heat detectors such as the ones that are built into this 4 wire I3 see there's one there and one there use little semiconductors called thermistors which digitally detect the temperature. And it's basically with heat detectors, the same thing. Don't buy addressable ones unless you have a panel that's compatible. And don't buy two wire ones unless you know what you're doing, or unless you have a panel that'll work with a two wire one. So, I hope that clears up some information and maybe some misconceptions about smoke detectors and heat detectors. And this is the end of part three of the fire alarm buying guide. Part four is going to be panels. That one's going to be kind of tough because I only have one non-homemade panel. But I know of a bunch of other panels and I can talk about them. So, have a great day, everybody.